welcome to Leadership Table Talk, a show designed to help you develop and improve your leadership skills and talents. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Gillum, a retired Air Force Colonel and former member of the Senior Executive Service Corps. When I think about women leaders who inspire, motivate, encourage, and are truly making a difference as they lead from the front, my guest today is part of that dynamic collage. She is a retired Air Force Colonel, a senior leader at the Department of Veterans Affairs, a business owner, and a certified John Maxwell team leadership speaker, coach, and trainer. Wow. I could go on. So please help me to welcome the Director of Small Business Engagement and Program Development at the Department of Veterans Affairs and my friend, Michelle Garner, Inc. Michelle, oh welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so honored. <laughs> what a great introduction. Thank you, Michelle. You know, you have such a vast portfolio. So can you just tell the audience a little about your background? Yes, um, I'm a uh, military brat. So that means my dad was in the Army. Um, he was a retired Army colonel. Uh, I retired uh, after 27 years with a vast experience in hospitality, uh, retail, um, and uh, base operations, that means taking care of veterans <laughs> and their families, and uh, have done that and love every minute of it. Um, large portfolio, uh, I've managed uh, up to 7,000 people, <laughs> $1.2 billion, 87 different locations, you know, all those experiences that an Air Force colonel uh, would never get as an equivalent, uh, you know, in the civilian sector. Uh, without spending a whole lot more years, uh, you know, than 20 years. So uh, it's really an honor. Yeah. So, Michelle, uh, what made you decide to join the Air Force or the military? Uh, well, the logic of a 17 year old uh, back in uh, uh, 70, 78, when I went to, to college, you had to take ROTC or yes. PE uh, if you were a federally funded school. So, Tuskegee, being a federally funded school, I knew my dad was, you know, out with the army, uh, you know, in the field, sweaty, and uh, there was these two beautiful <laughs> ladies uh, standing there recruiting for Air Force, and the logic of a 17-year-old goes, I think I, that uniform looks a lot better, and uh, I don't believe they're going to have to sweat and be in the field. Well, uh, you know, I didn't realize the whole picture until later, but <laughs> that, yes, the Air Force does deploy and yes. do those kinds of things, but at yes. 17 years old, you know, you don't know the full spectrum, but that's yeah. the reason I joined uh, the, the Air Force and spent one semester, and wow, after that, three and a half year scholarship, yes. and the rest yes. was uh, history, and, you know, I said I was going to stay for a little while, and I loved it, and 27 <laughs> years later, it was... Seemed like you yesterday. Still loved. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Michelle, let me ask: um, As you spent those twenty-seven years, what were some of the challenges that you faced as a female leader? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest things um, that I faced was just being yourself, yeah. not feeling yeah. like I ha I have to lead like a man, act like a man, mm -hmm. and this was an era in which. Women were still new to the military. Yes, you know, it wasn't yes. until the sev like '77, I believe, mm -hmm. that uh, women were admitted to the Air Force Academy yes. <laughs> and started flying and all mm -hmm. those things. So, um, you know, it was still early. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, basically, I would say that was one of the biggest. Uh, things, but at the same token, I, I had a lot of male mentors uh, right. who also mm -hmm. were very supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I have a saying: you can't put a blanket over sunshine. So if your excellent shines, <laughs> yes. that draws yes. people in, yes. right? And uh, yes. and uh, you know, they'll want to help you. Uh -huh. And you know, of course, people want to bask in that glow. So people want to be near the excellence, as I say. You know, they go, "Hey, if she's shining, that means I look good too." So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, I would say that was one of the biggest things is just, you know, not feeling like I had to, to be a, a, a lead like a man. Second thing I would say is, you know, realizing I would not be my mother's mother. So, yes. you know, I have two children. I, I was in, I had 400 people working uh -huh. for me when I had my first child. Uh -huh. And, um, and, you know, realizing, just, just releasing the pressure and the guilt of, mm -hmm feeling like I have to be like my mother, because my mother didn't have 400 people working for her ever, you know? 
And uh, so trying to balance motherhood and leadership, you know, in setting an example for other women. Um, and the other challenge I, I think that a lot of women deal with, but, but I had great female mentors early that pulled yes, me aside yes. and said, you know, uh, don't, don't show too much emotion. Yes. You know, I mean, you're, you're emotional, but don't cry, uh, you know, and be hysterical uh, because yeah. uh, that's not viewed well by, mm -hmm. by the men you're, you know, leading yes. and, and sometimes can impact the influence of your leadership. So I would say those are the, those are the key things, you know. Um, you know, balancing motherhood and family mm -hmm. and, and then, um, you know, being, um, being your own leader. Right. And, 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 and I would just say, mm -hmm. being a female le leader, there's a lot of benefits. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of benefits that you can sense when somebody needs maybe <laughs> nurturing, <laughs> coaching, you're, you're a little bit more yeah. in tune uh -huh. to those right. things. Uh -huh. And um, I think we also try to, um, you know, leave our mark. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle, let me ask you, you said your father was a um, retired uh, Army Colonel. Yes. So how did he prepare you for wow. um, leadership? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like i, I so blessed mm -hmm. because, you know, my brother and I came from a family of leadership. My mother was uh, Army Wife of the Year for 1973, wow. so she was a community leader. Yes. So, you know, both my brother and I have a heart for service. Uh, yes. And then my father was one of the first uh, Black Army Corps of Engineers. Wow. And so, um, uh -huh. you know, they taught us, uh, you know, you leave deep footprints everywhere you go. Uh, make it hard to follow you, you know, and I think I did halfway decent on that. And then um, you leave your signature, uh -huh. and your name and your reputation mm -hmm. is something that nobody can take from yes. you and and oh by the way it only takes a second to uh, ruin it right absolutely. so you know integrity service mm -hmm. excellence is is in my dna uh -huh. you know we uh, my kids always say mom you do too much i said well <laughs> you know is there anything is like half doing it so yeah yeah now, um, <laughs> uh, michelle you, you're just so infectious here. <laughs> let, let me ask uh, regarding a mentor or yes, coach, yes. Uh, th did you have one along the way or sponsor? Or? Let me just say, mm -hmm. I didn't have a sponsor. Uh -huh. I was kind of a, an anomaly, I should say. I didn't have one early. Uh -huh. Let me just put, well, I take that back. Let me, let me <laughs> reverse. Okay, so when I first came in, uh -huh. I worked for a chief, That's wh which is a chief master sergeant uh -huh. in the Air Force. I say that proudly because mm -hmm. most lieutenants think chiefs work for them. Well, <laughs> he'd been in 30 years, oh, yes. you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm like, who am I? I absolutely. But, but I, I attribute my, my ability to lead the enlisted force uh -huh. is because I was humble enough. Uh -huh. My dad said, find a good senior NCO yes. Yes. and latch on yes. and they will take care of you. So absolutely. he taught me how to be technically yes. savvy uh -huh. and knowledgeable in the area, uh -huh. how to lead, uh -huh. um, you know, the enlisted force mm -hmm. and how to, you know, understand regulations uh -huh. that don't take the fact that so-and-so said, uh -huh. what does the regulation yes. or the policy say? Absolutely. So I would say, you know, I, I had him. And then along the way, I had very good supervisors that, again, I was always kind of an overdoer <laughs> because of how I've been raised, you know, a high achiever. So uh -huh. they, um, you know, they, they took care of me and gave me opportunities to, to shine and, uh -huh. and I made them look good uh -huh. and, and they rewarded me. Uh -huh. But I didn't really have, those were what I call, you know, John Maxwell says, you're a tour guide or a travel agent, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And so, um, so I had a lot of travel agents mm -hmm. that told me, you know, how fast you want to get their uh -huh. bus, train, car. Uh -huh. But, um, you know, they didn't necessarily go with me. Uh -huh. That's why I had to stop and say, well, yeah, they were mentors of sorts. But I've only had like one or two I would call tour guides. Uh -huh. Yes. And those are people that go with you. They say, I've been there, yes. follow me, uh -huh. let's take the hill together. Uh -huh. You know, it's going to be very tiring uh -huh. or hard or put your raincoat on. You're <laughs> like, it's not raining. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I've only had one and he has been tremendous. I think tour guides, they know you personally. Uh -huh. They know you professionally. They, they understand your gifts. They help you grow those gifts. Yes, you know, yes. they give you encouragement when everybody uh -huh. else is saying that's weird. They're going, mm -hmm. no, that's not weird. Uh -huh. That's what, that's where your power uh -huh. is. That's where you're unique. Yes. Grow that yes. area, you yes. know? And, and, and so I, you know, I've, I've only had, I would say one that's been that way. And, and he came right at the mm -hmm. right time, you know, right before I, I came up for Colonel, cause uh -huh. I was just going to retire. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, so. 
So I would say it's important to have many travel agents, right. but you need at least <laughs> one tour guide. <laughs> I, I love what you said because um, I firmly believe that uh, when it comes down to mentoring and, and those kind of things, that we not try to create many me's, yes. many me's of yes. ourselves, yes. but we recognize those gifts that are in the person that we are mentoring That's so right. that their gifts can flourish, flourish. and yes. they can be the person that God designed them yes. to be. Because yes. yes. I know a lot of times some mentors, they want to try to create a, a car. Carbon, carbon copy, copy of themselves. Of themselves. And, 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 and it, ru and it, and it, it sometimes, I won't say, I was going to say it ruins people, but it, it makes people get frustrated uh, and feel like this doesn't feel uh, like me, yes, right? Yes. And I was just telling a young lady, because I do some mentoring mm. on LinkedIn, uh -huh, people will, right. will mm -hmm. you know, communicate through yes. Messenger. And I told her, I said, some oftentimes we're looking for that tour guide in our supervisor, uh, uh -huh. and that's the wrong place to look. And uh -huh. we're frustrated that I don't, I'm not getting that tour guide relationship, uh -huh, right. right, with my supervisor. Mm -hmm. Well, your supervisor is paying you to do X, uh, yes, right? Yes. And you're doing X. Uh -huh. And if they're not a mature or, or um, a, a, a coach kind right. of, of supervisor, they just see you for doing X. Yes. When you might be able to do A, B, three, C, D, uh -huh, all the way right. through X, you can do so many things, but they just say, I paid you to do this, uh -huh. do that, and they don't see value uh -huh. in anything else. And I said, look for other people uh -huh. who see that or who have that gift because you love how you've been loved, you mentor how you've been mentored, you coach yes. how you've been coached. Yes. And, yes. oh, by the way, <laughs> people who have the gift can help you grow uh -huh. the gift. Right. Right? Exactly. So football players, coaches, coach okay. football players, okay. basketball players, coach basketball okay. players. So those are the people who can help because okay. they know all the techniques and the skills and the, you know, physical okay. or mental, you know, um, abilities that are required to be a superstar. So, you know, that was my advice to that, that young lady that, uh, you know, stop looking. You'll, you'll be less frustrated if you manage your expectations. And don't expect yes. your supervisor to be that tour guide yes. or that, that, you know, mentor that yes. you're, you think you're seeking. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it looks like we're coming up on a break, so please stay tuned, and we will continue this conversation after the break. After leaving the military, some veterans may face homelessness, but they aren't alone in the battle. Thanks to a simple phone call, they can get help from a trained professional at VA. If you know of or are a veteran in need, call 877-424-3838. As an American, I'm proud of the men and women in our armed forces who every day protect our freedom. That's why I'm also proud to support Help Hospitalize Veterans a nonprofit organization that offers veterans free therapeutic arts and craft kits specially designed to help them in their recuperation. The kits can also help veterans coping with depression or PTSD. To receive a free kit, call this number or visit hhv.org on the web. Thank you. Welcome back to Leadership Table Talk. My guest today is retired Colonel Michelle Garner, Inc. So Michelle, before we uh, went to break, we mm -hmm. were talking about um, a lot of the things that you had learned as part of the John Maxwell team, yes. some of those things that you had pointed out yes. uh, with the terminology and stuff like that. So can you kind of share with us a little bit more about what you've learned as part of his organization? Wow, well, where do I start? First <laughs> of all, you know, um, the John Maxwell uh, coaching leadership mm -hmm. um, effort has just blown up in the last like five or six years yes. where I think there's, oh my God, I think we're in more than 150 <laughs> countries mm -hmm. and hundreds of thousands of coaches, trainers, et cetera. Um, and ironically, I've been teaching John Maxwell since 2000. Uh -huh. <laughs> so before he um, even came out with this coaching yes. training effort, uh -huh. I, w I had his videotape, uh -huh. so that tells you how far back <laughs> it was, his VHS tape. Uh -huh. And I bought the entire series and created courses to teach my airmen. Wow. And so I've been <laughs> teaching Airmen Leadership School, uh -huh. NCO Academy, uh -huh. as well as, you know, at the chapel uh -huh. for uh -huh. leaders who, yes. who uh, young leaders who want uh -huh. to take it. And I just did it for free mm -hmm. because I realized my passion 
um, to teach leadership was something that we didn't get early yes, enough. Yes, yes. Right? Uh -huh, and, yes. and I live and breathe. I mean, I consider, I don't consider myself to be an expert, but I consider myself to be a student uh -huh. of leadership. Mm -hmm. And if you see a hotel and there's a light out on the sign, it's leadership. Uh -huh. If you get bad service somewhere, it's leadership. Uh -huh. And, and I, I love the way Ritz Carlton does it. Uh, yes. You know, Ritz Carlton is, if a property is not profitable, they fire uh -huh. the, the, the general manager. Mm -hmm. And they don't say, well, let me help you, none of that. They say you're gone because if you could have made it successful, you would have. And then they start at the grassroots training all of the customer service, uh -huh. yes. the hotel staff, and yes. they bring in new leadership. Yes. yes. Uh, because, and most properties are profitable uh -huh. after that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I think John um, has changed my life. Um, in that everything I see mm -hmm. is about leadership. about leadership. If it's good, it's about leadership. Mm -hmm. Self, whether it's self leadership mm -hmm. or leadership over others, yes, right? When yes. you have mm -hmm. have uh, you know leaders that have um, you know uh, ethics it's, issues uh -huh, or, right. uh -huh. or moral issues, yes, it's yes. a self leadership yes, issue, right? Yes. If it's you know their leadership of people, mismanagement mm -hmm. of people or resources, then it's their leadership <laughs> of others. So. Um, you know, John has been tremendous, and I think, uh, you know, it makes you constantly seek to be better so you can teach better, mm -hmm. teach others how to fish for oh, themselves. I know. I know um, later this week, I'm going to have a um, radio blog with a lady out of Stuttgart, Germany. Wow. And part of that, she asked, um, well, what are some of the books that have influenced your leadership development Absolutely. along the way? John Maxwell's series. I had to tell her, and yeah, I the put series, that down. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I said, mm -hmm. his series. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't I just the same pick way. one. <laughs> I feel exactly the same he's way. he's just truly a wonderful person in yes, that respect. Yes, yes. So, um, Michelle, since you have led at the executive level yes. as a female leader for many, many years, uh, why is it important that a uh, female own her leadership presence? Mm. Well, I think that's tremendous in several mm -hmm. ways. People always say, oh, you always look nice. Mm -hmm. That's not by accident. <laughs> you know, I have okay. a strategy, mm -hmm. just like you would have a strategy about approaching anything. Yeah. Because what I find is that men like consistency. Yes. They don't want to see you one way one minute uh -huh. and another way another yes. minute. It makes you seem indecisive. Yes. Now, this is my personal view. Uh, There's uh, other women who may uh, not agree. So appearance... Uh -huh is very consistent yes. appearance is important. Everybody has a bad day, but it can't be your bad day. You look bad all the time. And then also your decision making uh -huh. needs to be very, very decisive, uh -huh. I think. And maybe that's because of my military mm -hmm. you know, background. Yes. I think decisive uh, decisions are important. Mm -hmm. I don't need a lot of, I've done this so long. I don't need to know 100% of the information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, exactly. I, I, I can do 70, even you know, 65, uh -huh. because there are certain indicators that I know say this is good decision uh -huh. or not. And I rely, of course, on the people who are around me. Uh -huh. One of the things I always do and has been key to my success is putting right person in right place, yes, right? And exactly. that comes from understanding gifts. Sometimes uh -huh, people who aren't performing are not in the right uh -huh. job right. or the mm -hmm. right role. Mm -hmm. And we are afraid sometimes as, as when, well, they don't want to go or whatever. So I think, that, you know, it's, it's important to be decisive. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to look confident because when we're off, we, you know, uh, uh, the way we look or emotionally, we have to keep the, those emotions uh -huh. intact. And I'm, I'm very compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like what's happening at home uh -huh is at home uh -huh. and you know I try to I think that's I don't know that men have to do that as much uh -huh. um, but I think that as women we have to look the part uh, we have to be decisive not that we can't change our mind but uh -huh. when we change our mind we need to say I'm changing my mind and this isn't just a whim uh -huh. this was a very thought out uh -huh. reason that I decided to to change the approach or the decision I'm making mm -hmm. so well, let me ask you uh, Michelle uh, Sometimes people think that women cannot work for other women leaders. Mm. Again, you talk a little bit about mm -hmm, that as mm -hmm. we are encouraging women right, to grow and right, develop right. as leaders. I disagree. Mm -hmm, Two of absolutely. My, my very best uh, supervisors have been women. Yes, One yes. was a two-star general uh -huh. and one was a senior executive. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they both were tremendous, mm -hmm. very trusting, very um, understanding of family issues because, uh, you know, this is when I was in Japan and my, fa my husband was here mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the children were with me, so they were very um, understanding. Even, you know, I, I tried not to, to, to let that impact my work, but uh -huh. there were times when decisions had to be made. They were very supportive. Um, they were kind of like, you know, hey, I, I'm, I believe in you. Uh -huh. Let me know how I can help you. Uh -huh. They were not micromanagers uh -huh. at mm -hmm. all. So I consider myself to be, you know, very, very fortunate. I uh -huh. think sometimes the pressure is that women, when they, they want to work for strong women, and they want to be leaders, but they don't realize what it takes. Mm -hmm. And then when you are demanding, sometimes they think you're, you are demanding of them something you wouldn't demand of a of a man, mm -hmm. and that's not right. necessarily mm -hmm. right. true, exactly. right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. I just think sometimes they they want you to be more understanding, mm -hmm. and this is business. Uh -huh, right, this is business. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> it, it is. It's it's business. Mm -hmm. So um, I I have found that, um, you know, I've had superb mm -hmm. uh, support, mm -hmm. and and you know, I currently work for two female uh -huh. executives, uh -huh. and so I consider myself to be so blessed. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful, and, mm -hmm. and I definitely agree. I've worked with some uh, great women in my past who really set this uh, the bar, mm -hmm. and uh, were very very uh, successful ladies. So. Michelle, let me ask, um, what are some lessons that, uh, as a leader, that you would share with any emerging leader as they are developing? Uh, be true to yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and half of leading is learning yourself mm -hmm. because there are things that you shouldn't do. I don't care, I just talked with somebody earlier today. It doesn't matter the money, it doesn't matter the title. Uh -huh doesn't matter the position. Mm -hmm. If you're not gifted in that, you, are, yes. you, are, you will be division and subtraction to that organization. Yes. Okay? Yes. Whereas if it, you are operating in your gifted yes. area, yes. you can do the work of five people uh -huh. because you inherently know what needs to be done uh -huh before and more than anybody <laughs> else, right? So I would say that's very important. Uh, I would say also don't take yourself so seriously. Mm -hmm. That's something that's hard for me, you know, because uh, I'm a ser happy, serious person. You know, learn to laugh at yourself mm -hmm. because everybody makes mistakes. Yes, yes. And people need to see that you're real, uh -huh, you know, right. that you're not perfect. Uh -huh. um, um, I, I think also we should encourage people to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes we put people in jobs and we don't want to let them go. Uh, yes. So yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we don't mm -hmm. let, want them let them go uh -huh, try right. new things. Exactly. Um, and I would say, oh, something I spoke on last week when I was at, at the Air Force Recruiting uh, Women's Symposium <laughs> is leverage your contacts. Uh -huh. You know, I have more than 10,000 contacts. Uh -huh. That's because, you know, I don't have all of them on LinkedIn uh -huh. because everybody I've ever had an email or a phone number for since the year 2000, I have them. And I keep that because it helps remind you of people you knew. If you meet them again, you can go, you can quickly, I, one of my techniques is I run to the bathroom and look in my phone and oh yeah, I met them at Hanscom. Oh, I know I knew them from somewhere. So they, then you come back and go, oh yeah, I remember. You, you know, they think you're really, you know. So I'm giving away my secrets, but, um, but yeah, but I think leveraging your connections is critical. Yes. And people are always selling themselves. Uh -huh. Don't sell yourself. Uh -huh. Sell your intellectual capital, yes. you know, and, and uh, uh, Cindy Trim says, solve a, uh -huh. solve yes. a problem, uh -huh. right? Address an issue, uh -huh. meet a need. Yes. Now think yes. about it, if you talked to, everybody you talk to, you talk about, here's the issue I'm trying to work on, here are some of the problems I'm trying to solve, here's, you know, here's some of the things I'm passionate <laughs> about, you know, addressing, uh -huh. guess what? People are gonna wanna connect to you because uh -huh. you're either solving their problem, mm -hmm or they can solve yours. <laughs> and the greatest connections come when there's a win-win. Yeah, When exactly. I can help you uh -huh. and you can help me. Yes. So, you know, I, I, I think with social media, mm -hmm. it's good, but there's nothing like that face-to-face. -face. Yes, you know, I mean, absolutely. There's, just, there's just nothing like that face-to-face, -face, <laughs> you know. And, and, and the last thing I would say is, you know, 
always seek to meet new people. Yes. If you're not networking, you're not working. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. So every, I mean, I don't care whether it's a security guard, you know, someone at the grocery store, you can always learn something from someone. Sometimes it's what not to do, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> So, Michelle, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where the time has gone, but it looks like our time is coming to a close today. So I just want to say thank you. Thank no, you. Thank, thank you. you. I'm so honored <laughs> and, and what a delight it's been. Thank you for your your passion thank for, you. you know, helping people uh, be better leaders, giving them the exposure to mentors, you know, e this is what this is. They're getting exposure. They're getting rich, rich, you know, information and experience. So thank you. Well, thank you again. And I want to thank you, our watching uh, audience, for uh, looking at our show today. So if you have any questions or would like to find out more information about this show or others, please go to my website, executiveleadershipbiz.com. Again, this is Dr. Mary Gellum, and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.